hockey fans, you're listening to Hockey by Northwest, the show where we talk about the only teams you care about, the Vancouver Canucks, Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers, and Winnipeg Jets. I'm your host, Brendan Monroe. Thanks for joining us. In today's show, we're going to take a look ahead at the upcoming season for the Vancouver Canucks, your 2010-2011 Western Conference champions. The Canucks last year experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And as the summer has gone on, they've continued to experience what could only be described as even lower than the lowest of lows. It all started to go off the rails with the terrible on-ice performance of Game 7 of last year's Stanley Cup Finals. And that meant watching the Boston Bruins celebrate a Stanley Cup victory on the Canucks home ice at the Rogers Center. Then things got really crazy outside, and everyone decided to riot and burn cars and fight the police. And that certainly was devastating for the entire Canucks organization. And it really only got worse from there with the tragic and untimely passing of forward Rick Rippon. And only a few days ago, they learned about the tragic and untimely passing of forward Canucks for, former Canucks forward Pavel Dimitra. It's been a very traumatic, very emotional, very rough season for the Canucks as they also fight the injury bug The stretch drive of last year's playoffs left pretty much everyone on the Canucks roster with some kind of injury, some bigger than others, some with more long-lasting effects than others. Forward Ryan Kessler, who led the team last year with 41 goals, continues to hobble after hip surgery in the weeks after the Stanley Cup Finals. Mason Raymond continues to recover from his severe neck injury experienced during the Stanley Cup Finals. Although I think we're going to see fully healthy Daniel and Henrik Sedin returned to the lineup in Game 1, and we're going to see a fully healthy Manny Malhotra contribute right away as the season gets going here in the next few weeks. That's exciting. We're going to have hockey back, and we're going to see what uh, the Canucks can do. However, there will be a couple of people that will not be rejoining the Canucks this season, most notably Christian Erhoff and uh, his 50 points from the blue line They uh, shuffled off to Buffalo in what can be described as the biggest overpay for any free agent this summer. And the Canucks simply were not willing to match the terms that the Buffalo Sabres offered for the services of Christian Erhoff. And that's left a big hole on the Canucks blue line. Who's going to fill it? Well, I think you're going to see a big bounce back here for defenseman Keith Ballard, who found himself in Alain Vigneault's doghouse for the better part of last season and into the playoffs as well. This was his last shot. He's a multi-million dollar defenseman who was passed over by inexperienced rookie defensemen like Chris Tanez in uh, last year's playoff drive. So if he doesn't bring his game to camp and prove that he's ready to contribute right out of the gate, I think we're going to see the uh, last games played by Keith Ballard in an NHL uniform. And speaking of Chris Tanev, I expect this to be a big breakout year for him. Of course, he earned the coach's full confidence last year and uh, he should be a mainstay of the Canucks' blue line in this coming season. I also think this could finally be the year of Cody Hodgson. We saw some contributions from Cody Hodgson over the course of last year's playoff run, and uh, I expect to see him start on the fourth line this year with opportunities to uh, move up into a position of further prominence, especially if uh, some of the Canucks forwards are a little bit slower to recover from injuries to get the season underway. And that's the story that I expect from the Canucks to begin this year is a slow start. I think those injuries from last year will continue to wear on the Canucks players, especially their forwards. The Canucks' strength last year was the power play. And as soon as you take Ryan Kessler out of that power play, well, frankly, the numbers just aren't going to be as good. Also, when you take Christian Erhoff out of that power play, the numbers just won't be as good. Ultimately, they'll figure it out. They'll get it together. But it could take a few games, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a slow start out of the Canucks as uh, the first few games and first few weeks of the NHL season unfold. That said, by Christmas, the Canucks should comfortably be back in first place in their division because, frankly, they're playing in a pretty weak division this year. I expect improvements out of the Oilers. I expect the same old, same old out of the Calgary Flames. Minnesota won't be that good. Colorado won't be that good. And when it all evens out over a 20- or 30-game stretch into the new year, the Canucks should be pretty comfortably in first place in the division. 
I don't expect them to have as strong a season due to that slow start uh, over the course of a full 82-game schedule. So I don't see them finishing first in the West. So I'm going to confidently predict that they'll finish in third place in the West this year. They're, of course, a playoff team in just about everyone's uh, minds and certainly mine as well. What will the playoffs mean for Vancouver in 2011-2012? Well, it's going to go one of two ways. It's going to mean either the heartbreak from last season will inspire them to another deep playoff drive, or maybe the punishment physically over last year combined with this year will be just enough to slow them down and uh, make them a target in the, the opening round or opening two rounds of the playoffs. My inclination is that likely the latter will hold true and much to the chagrin of resilient defenseman Kevin Bieksa, who seemed to take this team uh, by the horns last year in the playoff drive and say, this is what we're doing, guys. We're going all the way. I just don't think the Canucks will show that same kind of heart in this year's playoff drive. Or maybe they'll show the heart, but their legs just won't be there. It's just too demanding to put two deep playoff stretch drives back to back. And ultimately, I think that's what will happen to the Canucks. I think they'll fall victim to injuries and uh, we'll, we'll see an exit, disappointingly, at some point in the uh, first or second round of this year's playoffs. But who knows? Maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe they'll surprise all of us and go right back all the way to Game 7 of the final and win it this time. It, uh, it certainly would be what the fans are hoping for. It certainly would be what the management and the organization expect out of this Canucks lineup, whose window, frankly, is closing. And a lot of people will say, well, they have all their best players locked up under contract. But as we proved last year, having a lineup that is capable of winning certainly does not mean that that lineup will win. And I think as the lineup continues to change over time, as players age, as players wear down, the chemistry starts to change, and that window that looked so wide open last year will quickly, quickly disappear. We saw that happen to the Calgary Flames. We saw that happen to the Edmonton Oilers. We saw that happen to the Ottawa Senators. Teams that had gone all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals Everything looked good, and within a year or two, they were struggling just to uh, keep up with the playoff picture. And uh, hopefully for Canucks fans, that won't be the case. But really, they have to get behind this team, as this could be the year for the Canucks. And it could also be the start of the decline of the Canucks. So that's about all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for joining me, and uh, join us next time as we preview the 2011-2012 season as it pertains to the brand new version of the Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for joining us. Good night.